Hi everyone, this is Studio Slave on behalf of ADSR and in this video we're going to have a look at two of the new changes to mixing in Ableton Live 10. So the first one is we see we have this clave and this rim shot here. One's panned to the left and one's panned to the right and this is a balance control. If we have a look in session view then we can see it's the standard balance control we're used to. And the difference with this is that if we have stereo information and we use our balance control and we pan it all the way to the left or right, then we're actually changing that stereo information, we're actually getting rid. In this case, we're getting rid of the left channel and in the case of our clave, we're completely getting rid of the right channel. So what we can now do, just to show you this in a slightly better way, is I'm gonna solo these two sounds and I'm gonna record the information onto this resampling channel here. So what I'm doing now is I'm recording the clave which is on our left channel and the rim shot which is on our right channel and that is now on a single track of audio. That's now on a single track of audio so there's absolutely no confusion as to what headphone it's coming out of. So what we can do is we can right click and from this context menu we can select split stereo pan mode and this is a global control so it's the same in session view as well and we can now pan at the left and right channels independently of one another so if I was to pan in the standard mode if you listen to what's going to happen if I pan to the left we completely lose our rim shot and if I pan to the right we completely lose our clave so it's completely cutting out that information however if we go to split stereo pan mode and what we can now do is we can pan the right signal all the way to the left and we can now hear both signals are still present they've just been panned to the left hand side And likewise, if we pan them both the other way, we can still hear both the rim shot and the clay, so they're both still there. And then we could have spread it nice and wide, so we've got the clay on the left, the rim shot on the right, or we could bring it in slightly. And that's just narrowing our stereo field. So it's the same as using something like a utility device and just pulling in the width. And then eventually we could just have this. Something like that, or we could go all the way down to zero. And essentially we've got that in the center of our mix now, it's mono signal. So this is really handy because if we want something to have some stereo width, then we can still have stereo width. But what we could actually do is we could say, right, I want it to be from the right and it's going to be from 50 right to 30 right. So it's still got stereo width over to the right hand side. We're not losing either of the channels, but it's just confined to a certain area of the frequency spectrum now. So we can fill gaps within our spectrum. Now the last thing I want to show you is we now have the ability to be able to do submixes on a drum kit and what we can do is we can send the output from one of these pads to a return track from within the parent drum kit which allows us to either submix, mute or solo or do any effects that we want to do within that drum kit. So just to show you this, what we do is we open this up, so we've got our chains here and with our chains we get our inputs and outputs and we also get our sends and returns. So I'll open them all up, and what we'll do is we'll create a couple of returns. So we'll go for back beat, tops, percussion, we'll do one more. Base, and then we could even color code these as well in the standard sort of colors. And now, what we can do is we can actually go to our sounds here 
I'll just show you the actual clip. So what I've got is I've just got this simple clip that's playing. I've got a few bass notes as well, which I added in, which is just this sound I've put up here. So what we can now do is listen to that sound. And we'll go to the audio too. Instead of sending it to the rack output, I can now send it to one of my return chains. So I'll send it to bass. And then I'm also going to send all of the rest of the pads to their relevant bus as well now. So we've got backbeat, tops, percussion, and bass. And then once we've done that, we can just drag up these return chains so we can see them. And what we can now do is we can... Here are individual parts. And then if we wanted to, we could even go and affect these differently as well. So we could put something like a pedal on the bass. And you can see that's going to go here. And then we can bring that all back in. And then we can submix that now from here. So say the bass is too loud. So that is the ability to submix and to root individual pads in the drum kit. That's everything for mixing in Ableton Live 10 and I'll see you in the next video where we're going to cover Max for Live.